Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Metro Exodus Sam Story DLC. A man of principle trophy walkthrough and this is episode 6 which I have named a new mission because we have gotten a new mission. In the last episode we ran into the captain once again and we have brought him t uh, Tom's offer, almost call him Tim. But uh, and he has agreed to give up the fuel rods for the giant submarine. But before we can pick up the fuel rods, we're going to have to get some hazmat suits because the place where they are stored is radiated radiated up to the eyeballs. And we are going to walk into an ambush. So what you want to do is take your sammy rifle and equip it with the semi-automatic barrel and also load it up with your incendiary rounds. Because in this walkway or whatever you want to call it, in between these buildings, suddenly there's going to be a flashbang flying in right about now. There we go. And a few bandits are super pissed off at you for taking out their friends. I would argue that they started it and I just finished it. <laughs> But these guys aren't very agreeable and now we're really gonna see the power of the incendiary rounds because semi-automatic system allows you to fire single shots and I talked about that in the last episode I think that these bullets are super deadly and as you can see that guy right there I shot him in the ass even <laughs> Not even in the ass, he, I caught, caught him in the lower thigh and he immediately started burning and dies. And that goes for all the human enemies in this game. As I said, I'm not quite sure how it works on the human animals. For some stupid reason, I never tried it on those. I'm, I'm so used to, from the main game, to always use a shotgun when it comes to the mutants because I think it feels in these games like the shotgun has a better stopping power when it comes to mutants than when it comes to humans I don't know why that is might be like a little homage to the Doom series but I think that's a stretch or maybe it's just that the regular Sami bullets aren't super effective. Even noise. when you're fighting at human enemies, they don't seem as effective as they could be. But as long as you stock up in, on incendiary rounds, and if you're a bit careful with your resources, you should never run out of them in this game. As long as you don't go completely fucking postal and try to mow down everything with them and aim all over the place like you saw me do. A little bit there but as long as you're a bit what's called conservative with your bullets you know where you're taking it a little bit careful so you don't waste them you should have no problems at all and if any of you tries out the incendiary rounds on the human animals and realizes that it's super effective please write so in the comments or if it's super shitty against the human animals because I would like to know, and it can be a great tip to other viewers tuning into this walkthrough, so please help each other out. And here in this tall grass, you see right there, there is a mine. So make sure you don't walk into that. I came really close. If I had moved further like another inch, it would probably have exploded. But now we are in a new area of the map. And there are some things we are going to do here. I'm going to show you. I talked about in one of the first episodes that there was a side quest that glitched for me. I couldn't complete it. And I'm going to show you the mission either way. Here is the first step of that mission. Because we are going to go into this boat. You'll hear a guy ranting. And we go in and talk to him. He tells you about that he had a car dealership with his brother. And his brother conspired against him. I have trimmed out most of this because he talks forever. 
And there is some loot to pick up in there, so make sure to do so while he's jabbering on. But he talks about that his brother swindled him out of their car dealership, and he wants you to find the papers, the ownership papers of the business, so you can show his brother that he is the rightful owner. As I fall off the little walkway. <laughs> And it gives you his half of the combination to a safe where the ownership papers are stored. And his part of the combination is the first part, and that reads 1, 2, 3, 4. Great combination, don't you think? <laughs> and the next thing you want to do after you've talked to him is go up to these old ruins. You'll hear two guys talking. And over here is a little workbench and also a bed. In these games, there is a day and night cycle that you can use. The only time I think it is absolutely essential we need to take it into account is before you go to the Batwing fights because you do not want to fight the Batwing at night time because that is a completely different ball game. But when we go in here, we run into two of Tom's soldiers. And something really important, you saw me pick up a vest right there. That is the ammo vest, which allows you to carry twice as much ammo, which means bullets, shotgun rounds, incendiary bullets. And I would suggest you equip that and keep that equipped for the rest of the game, because I think that is one of the absolute best upgrades you can have for Sam. So I'm gonna switch over from my ammo pouches, it's called. I had a vest equipped that allows you to carry more secondary weapons, throwing weapons, like molotovs and grenades and throwing knives. But when you wear the ammo pouches vest, you can still carry five of each and that should always be sufficient. And now we're gonna head over to this little area across this river. There are two giant prawns lurking about down here. But they should never cause you any trouble. You see them right there. They will not follow you up on these walkways and they will also not follow you into the boat. So if you're quick, run when you want to get past them and you should never have any problems with them. Aha, so this. conserve your ammo. And use it for the times where you really need it. And over here, there is a Night Hunter stash, which we are going to pick up. And there are also some Humanimals lurking about. The Night Hunter stash in the building is in the building just to my left. But first, I go through here, because I think there is... I'm not quite sure, but I think there is a weapon upgrade in here. <sighs> Gotta find another way. I did a mistake <laughs> of not watching through this episode, because I usually watch through the episodes just before narration, so I will know what to talk about. And here is one of those... I think that was a smurf human animal, actually. There... Yes, he is... That was a blue one, and uh, thankfully we clipped him straight on with the buckshot, so he went down quickly. And I've said that, that they don't always do. Some of the blue ones will take such a beating, it's fucking insane. And don't get scared when you get in here, because you see one of them running towards you, and he gets trapped inside that cage. So now you can completely ignore him. He will not be able to get out of there because some of these bandits, they like to catch Maybe these mutants and then they sell them as slaves. They teach them a few basic things and sell them to other bandits so they can keep them as watchdogs and I guess some other menial tasks. Wasn't that a great shot? <laughs> that was that was fucking terrible. <laughs> and a thing to know, when you get out of this door, I had to do some editing because I got a bit confused on where the hell I was supposed to go. So I ran around here for a little bit and I've trimmed that out. 
when you get out of this door usually just to your right when you come out there will be another one of those smurfs standing there so make sure make an immediate 45 degree turn and clock his ass with no sorry 90 degree turn <laughs> mathematics have never been my strong suit and in this building is the night hunter stash and there are also i think there are a few humanimal i'm gonna say mutants I think I said in another episode I'm gonna call them humanimals, but let's just call them mutants because that is fucking hard to pronounce. And you saw that one? He was alive. Because he did a big twitch when we threw the knife. And that is also something I've said previously, that a lying mutant isn't always dead. So always be careful, and that's why the throwing knives are so useful. And there we have the night hunter stash. So we're just going to crawl through this hole. Because you can use your throwing knives to throw them at lying bodies. And make sure that they are really dead. Or if they are just playing dead to lure you to come close to them. I could use that. And on another note. Since we do have some downtime here actually. I bought a new game. On Friday I bought Saints Row the third remastered and that is a remaster I've really been looking forward to I j actually just found out about it a couple of weeks and <laughs> I'm not surprised that they did a remaster of it because this has been uh, the regeneration of video games that is something I've talked a lot about on my channel and I must say going back into that game it, as far as remasters go, I wouldn't say it's the best remaster I've played. It doesn't feel like they have beefed it up super much. But that game is still so fucking hilarious. <laughs> and anyone who hasn't played Saints Row, it's like GTA but on steroids. Directed by the guys in Jackass. <laughs> Or at least so it feels, because it's one, the gameplay is pretty much like GTA, but with all kinds of realism taken out of it, and everything is super over the top at all times, and I really recommend that you check it out if you want a game that is just there for enjoyment. Because I've been playing a lot of heavy games lately, so it felt quite relieving to play a game where you just have fun. But a quick note here, I decided to switch over to nighttime. That's because I wanted to test, because we are going to quite a big bandit camp. And I wanted to test what it was like to do it during nighttime. And I can't say and I can say I didn't feel a super big difference. So if you want to do this during the day or during the night, it's completely up to you. I don't think it matters actually because I tried a bunch of different strategies because I know from the main game that during nighttime, mutants are a bit more active and humans are a bit more, I'm not gonna say passive. You see right there, we're going in the boat to that giant building but humans are a bit more passive they tend to huddle more around their bonfires and inside their bases Thank you, Tom. so on my first playthrough I went through this during daytime and uh, it ended up in uh, me and the enemies shooting at each other and going here at nighttime I tried a bunch of different strategies but the conclusion I came to was that this is actually the easiest way of doing this. Get their attention, go back to this bus and crawl inside it. And make sure you have the semi-automatic barrel and load your rifle up with the incendiary rounds. I'm going to switch over to them. I even think I put on my scope. Or did I? Because we are 
gonna have more or less a turkey shoot here. Is that the term? Because these guys may be horrible human beings. They are basically slavers since they capture mutants and sell them to other bandits. Not quite sure what the mutants feel about it. I don't think the mutants are even aware about what's happening to them. But these guys are also dumb as a bag of hammers, which is one of my favorite expressions I've ever heard in English. Because then you realize that this person is really fucking stupid. <laughs> and they may lose track of you from time to time. You, I think uh, they've lost track of me actually. And then we just crawl out and make sure to get their attention. And that's what I love about incendiary rounds. They are so forgiving when it comes to aiming. Because I think there is a, a soldier in this game that I even shot in the... That, that's a shot in the ass. But I think I shot a soldier in the foot. And he still started burning. And... <laughs> Actually, I don't know why they decided to do it like that, because it is basically god mode, having the incendiary rounds equipped. And it's... they don't take a lot of resources when you create them. And as long as you're better at aiming than I am, I am being very <laughs> wasteful with my bullets here. Because I rely a little bit on the aim assist. <laughs> Everyone who has played first person shooter games on PC and console knows that that is one point where PC is always going to have the upper hand when it comes to gameplay, I think. We have a great advantage playing on console that you uh, do have at most times a little aim assist. And aiming has been a lot or has become a lot more responsive over the years but I think still that PC does have the upper hand and in this place something that's very very important note these guys have a bunch of mutants captured but they are all tied up so you don't need to worry about them you'll hear them growling constantly and in the room, or inside a giant opening there in the wall, you can see a lot of movement. And that is mutants hanging from their ceiling. And you can completely... <laughs> Not quite sure if you could hear that, but Sam gave up a horrendous moan when that grenade went off. Sorry about laughing. But either way, you see those mutants over there, slightly to the left. They are tied to the ceiling. They cannot come loose. Is that correct? Either way, they will. They are just hanging there to get on your nerves, basically. They have them tied up alongside the walls here on the outside as well. I don't know if they are supposed to keep them as watchdogs or something, or if that is just where they store them. While waiting to sell them off to other slave traders. But now that most of the enemies are dead. I think at this point there is just one bandit left. And he's somewhere inside. So we are going to start advancing. And you saw that bus. That is a great place to take cover. Because I feel in this game or also in the main game it's always hard to find a corner that you can wedge yourself into you're almost always in a position when you end up in a shootout that you always have to cover two flanks but that's the great thing about the bus, bus because no one can sneak up behind you I don't think or maybe they will be able to shoot from the side but You'll have them in front of you, and they are not great tacticians. <laughs> Let's not give them that. They believe in full-on frontal approach. 
But that is the last of the bandits in here. So now we're gonna run around here a little bit and loot through everything. And we're also gonna pick up uh, the drum magazine for the Sami rifle. And that magazine allows you to load in... See that asshole? Try and scare me. <laughs> Just kill him with a throwing knife. I think they might be able to hurt you if you get too close. But as I said, they cannot get out from their imprisonment. Whatever you want to call it. But we're also going to pick up the drum magazine and the heavy stock, I think. Which is great for stability. If you're using the burst system, so your, your uh, bullets will come out quite close. To you won't have a lot of spread. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. But as I said, whenever we go up against... Uh, human enemies. I like to keep it as lightweight as possible and that will become more apparent later on in the game in the, the last mission or whatever you call want to call it. There is a place where we are gonna strip down our rifle to make it as light as possible because the heavier the rip rifle is, try to say rifle and weapon at the same time, <laughs> but the heavier your rifle is the more it will sway when you're using scopes. So that is something you need to do a way off uh, between stability and uh, weight. And I feel that whenever you're using the incendiary rounds, when you try, uh, when you rebuild the weapon into a sniper rifle, since the bullets are so overpowered, there is no need to have like heavy stock or shit like that because we are always firing single shots when we go in sniper mode but that is all that's inside that building but there is one more thing we need to pick up before we leave and i almost forgot about it so we have to run back and we go over here because there is a little bridge over here where there also is another boat if you want to use that instead this is a real and that has the heavy stock and the drum magazine and you should be getting close to the lord of war trophy quite soon but now that we are done here we are just gonna go back to our boat and we're gonna go back to the hub and make sure if you're playing this on nighttime or if you are playing it on daytime and it's getting close to night time. Make sure to switch over to... Make sure to rest. So you wake up in the morning. So you'll have light. Because in the next episode. We are going to take on uh, the Batwing once again. And have our second encounter with him. There are three encounters in total. And if you manage to get through all three encounters. Without dying in one of those fights. You will unlock the trophy called Untouchable. Feel free to die as much as you want throughout the rest of the game. But you have to beat all three Batwing fights on your first try. But that is the end of the episode. And as always, I want to thank you very much for watching. And I will see you again in my next video. So until next time, this is the Wolfman signing off.